Hello, I've got my 2016 Ram 1500 with no bed liner. I've had it for almost four years now. I kept telling myself I have to get it lined. Uh, so I decided that today's the day and I'm gonna do the Herculiner. Um, have the bed washed out. As you can see it's had some scratches in its day. Uh, the instructions say to go over it with the Scotch-Brite pad. I actually put mine on a palm sander. So I think that'll speed up the process of roughing everything up. And uh, I might finish it off with a 150 grit sandpaper, but we'll see. So I'm just going to document how I did it. A lot of really good videos on YouTube showing step by step. And I'm hoping to get results that are just as good. Well, here's where we're at now. So the front of it, I use the Grillo pad and... It did not uh, perform that well. It got clogged up rather quickly and then it stopped scratching. So the uh, 150 sandpaper really did the trick. Um, again, using the power sander, I got probably 90% of it done. I'm going to go back over it in the corners with the um, sandpaper, however, not with the sander. looks really white right now but once we get that cleaned up it'll probably turn black again it's not all the way through the, the clear coat of the paint but good enough to hopefully get a good bite on everything Well, I got the rest of it sanded by hand and with the sander. Starting to realize that the $600 price tag to do this professionally probably is mostly labor. Some guy with a piece of sandpaper scraping off all the clear coat and not the actual product itself. But and I'm about 20 minutes into this. And uh, I think for my light duty application, we'll be in good shape. Let's get it cleaned up now. I'm going to start off with simple green just to wipe off the bulk. Then I'm going to go back over the whole thing with acetone and get every last bit of grease, oil, and whatever else is in there off before application. So after going over it with the simple green, we got a lot of the dust off. I found a couple of areas like right there that are still a little bit shiny. So I'm going to go back over them with the sandpaper give it another good scrubbing and then hit it with the acetone. Acetone cleaning is complete. Highly recommend doing that outdoors. I think we're all good to go. So next step is getting it taped up and then rolling everything on. So I toyed a lot with what I was gonna do about the plate over the hatch and in the end, I decided to take it off. Um, looks like it's gonna be kind of a thin application on the first coat. So if I do, I guess the area where it's gonna make contact, as you can see where the paint stops, then should sit flush, should keep any debris out of there for the most part. Um, obviously, tell it doesn't stay completely clean by that, so. We'll keep on moving forward. I've been taping the lights with duct tape. I have the blue painters tape, but you know what? It's not like I'm gonna pull paint off the wall. So I think the duct tape will go good. I could have unscrewed them and let them dangle, but again, I just wanna make sure they sit flush and I don't have to get too crazy with it because most of the time you're not gonna see 
right there anyway. I ended up doing the duct tape on the edge of the tailgate protector and cleaned up the inside with acetone. Uh, I used the blue painter's tape just along the inside of this. I'm not going to get too worried about the bottom here. I think putting the roller on this flat portion should keep it mostly off of this. A uh, little concerned about runs, but I bet I could probably wipe those up rather quickly. So I'll give it a shot and we'll see if that was a mistake. So a lot of the things I said, I saw said to brush it first and then go back with the roller and the pieces you can't get to, but I'm gonna kind of do it together. So I got my brush, I got my roller, and I'm gonna go kind of systematically, maybe like two to three square feet at a time. And whatever I can't reach with the roller, I'll just tap with the brush and keep moving forward. So the rolling is actually going on very well. I would definitely recommend using a paint tray just because it kind of splits up the texture a lot nicer. I was dipping it in the can earlier and I wasn't getting a lot of the, the texture. So after I dumped it out into the paint tray, changed everything. Also gives it a nice even consistency in the roll. so far I'm pretty impressed I know it's real thin but they do say two coats is required so keep moving so far I'm very impressed um, used up what I had in there I'm probably down maybe an inch in my gallon can and it's really looking good I don't know how it looks on video but granted it's going over black so you're not gonna see the thin parts like you would on a white or yellow truck only thing I noticed is in this area, you can kind of see it in the camera, it's very heavily textured, so there must have been a clump in there that I ran over with the roller, uh, making it a little more gritty than usual, but I'm not too concerned. It's up front, and it's going to need a second, maybe third coat in the bottom anyway. But I like what I see so far. Well, this is after it dried all night. Looks really good on the inside. Again, as I had mentioned, the lines, as you can see, are from the different textures. So when I put my second coat in now, I'm going to have to try to put less texture in those areas and more in the others. One thing that I don't get whatsoever is the plate that I did separately is a nice gray versus the dark shiny black it's matte finish and doesn't match at all so no idea why that would happen but let's see if coat number two does the same thing all right coat number two applied i just did the sides by the tailgate and the bottom uh, I have about a third of the gallon left, so with the last third, I'm going to do the sides and then hit the bottom and the whole tailgate one more time. Came out really good this time, a lot thicker, a lot grittier. I did learn one notable thing that I think will solve my inconsistencies in the texture, and that is when I pour it into the paint tray. To continually stir it as you're pouring it I found that if it sits all that texture falls right to the bottom and you're just basically pouring half of what you should have in there maybe with the ratio so by stirring it as you pour I found it to be extremely consistent and as you can see it looks pretty nice um, also the tailgate cover came out really good too hopefully it won't turn gray and matte again but we will check it in 24 hours well here's how we're gonna leave it this is three coats I've already had stuff inside of it so I got a couple of dirty spots but pretty happy with it so far I think it'll be good I have to screw this down still. 
but definitely something I think will be a good investment and everybody should try at least once. Thanks for watching.